Hey, what's up, Street Talks? Eric came from the Eric and Street Star blog, currently at a super cool coffee shop at Asakusa, and I wanted to give you a current update of just my workflow in Photography Lightroom. So, what I first do is open up Finder and open up Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. So, you could just click it here and then open up Lightroom Classic CC. It's a new version where you have to pay about 10 bucks a month. I think it's totally worth it. It's so much faster than the older versions. And obviously we don't like playing for subscriptions, but it's actually simplified our lives, I think, for better. So generally what I do is when I first open up Lightroom, uh, the bottom left corner, I just click the import module. And I've already stuck in my SD card. And currently all these photos are with the new Lumix G9 Pro. And I'm just shooting everything JPEG, medium size, because I don't need super big file sizes. And also I'm using an older MacBook Air from like 2013, so it's a little slow. And the key thing to do is in the top right corner where it says everything, just keep this default. On the right side where it says apply during import, click this. And very, very important, under develop settings, you could do is you could choose your user preset. So I'm currently, I have like a bunch of presets. You could just Google Air Kim presets and find it. And I'm just always making new presets. And this is this new Air Kim Chroma version 21 that I'm currently working on. And by default, Lightroom is going to select all of your new images. And by default, when it downloads your folders, it puts it into my pictures and under this category. And what you just do is click import. And so what's gonna happen is as you're copying and importing your photos to your computer, it's going to automatically apply the preset. So I'm still currently working on the preset, so there's probably way too much contrast and blah, blah, but it's kind of an aesthetic that I like to do. And nowadays what I like to do, and I'm always kind of going through different workflows in photography, I just look at my photos one by one and it kind of gives me a fun chance to relive my experiences. So it's probably not the most effective way to look through my photos considering I'm <laughs> with the new Lumix C9 Pro, I'm probably shooting like a thousand photos a day and especially being here as a tourist in Tokyo. And the way I generally look through my photos is nowadays I just press the hotkey E for enlarge. And if I want to collapse the side bars, the hotkey is, so it's, press E to enlarge the photo. And if I want to collapse the sidebars, I just press shift and tab. And the shift tab hotkey, because by default, you could just click all these little arrows to make this a little bit smaller, right? But I just press shift and tab to just make it bigger and smaller. Cool. So generally what I'll do is I'll just kind of go through the photos one by one. And whenever I see a photo that puts a smile on my face, I just press the hotkey P for pick. And I just kind of go through the photos one by one and I try not to think too much about it. And because you know, Lightroom is still importing the photos, it's obviously gonna be a little bit laggy. And I just keep pressing P whenever I choose a photo that I like. So this is kind of cool. Saw this guy in the the hotel lobby. And a practical tip in street photography is if you see a person or a scene that immediately catches your eyes and kind of gives you a good mood, don't think too much about it, just start work in the scene and just getting close and shooting lots of different photos of them. And there's a saying that I like from the photographer Henri cartier Brisson is that sometimes you had to milk the cow a lot to just get a little bit of cheese. And the reason why this is important is as you're taking photos of people, you don't actually know what's going to be the best photo of them. And they're going to often do things that you don't expect them to do. So like even here, he's waving his hand, which is quite interesting. You can see I'm shooting this with the new Lumix 12 millimeter, like a 12, 12 millimeter 1.4 lens, which is roughly a 24 millimeter full frame equivalent. So I'm really close to him. I'm probably about like 0.3 meters, less than arm length away. And you can see as I'm shooting the scene, I'm experimenting with different angles. I'm tilting the camera horizontally, doing the Dutch angle. And I'm even making some different uh, jokes when I was taking his photo, I was like, oh, handsome this and he's like laughing and he's sticking up his hand so I kind of like that and the way I treat making a portrait of somebody is kind of treated kind of like a dance that you're talking to people you're making them more happy and you're putting your emotions and soul into the photo and when you think that you have the photo you probably don't so integrate this 25% principle is 
shoot 25% more photos than you think you should. And so essentially you could just go through all your different photos and I've got a bajillion photos and it's gonna take way too much time. And yeah, so generally when I'm navigating my photos now, I just give it E mode. You could also press F for full screen to look at your photos full screen. But the, the problem, I don't know why, is Lightroom is a little bit slower when you look at it in F mode for full screen. So uh, that's why I like to use E for the enlarged view. It's actually a little bit faster. I'm not quite sure why. So let's uh, assume that I've already looked through my thousand photos and I have the photos I like. Then you press the hotkey G to go back to the gallery. Then press Shift and Tab to once again de-collapse all of these sidebars. And this is important. In the bottom right corner where it says Filter, Filters Off, click this and click Flag. So whenever you like a photo and you press the hotkey P for Pick, Essentially, it's like a flag. I don't know why they use the terminology flag. I don't think it's actually good. I think they should just change the picked. But anyways, then it'll filter and only show you the photos which you picked. So if I click a photo and then press E to enlarge, now I can look at through these photos one by one. So let's say there's uh, a certain photo that I prefer. Of Cindy. So I'm using the left and right arrow keys. I prefer the first photo, not the second one. If you want to unpick a photo, you can press U and it gets removed from the queue. And I've taken a bunch of photos of this man here in the, the, the hallway. And generally what I'll do is I'll press the left and right arrow keys and just kind of quickly go through the photos and just see which photos puts me in the best mood. So you can see these first photos. In the beginning, he looks quite cool and solemn, but I actually quite like him laughing in the second to last photo with the hand gesture. So I'll press U to the other photos, U, U, U to remove the flag or unpick. I kind of like his expression. And if you want to further develop the photos, you could either press D for develop, or you could press the hotkey D, and then you could drag all the different settings here on the right, so you could adjust the exposure, the contrast, highlights, blah, 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 etc. To me, that's so I could just you know, hold the left click, I could drag this to left and right, and I don't treat it like a science, I just do whatever looks good to me. Or if I press G once again to go under the, the gallery view, and I can press E to enlarge. This is what I like to do. Use the quick develop in the top right corner. And you can uncheck this little tone control. And I'll just click these little arrows here to just adjust the exposure just a little bit, if I like it. But, you know, my personal philosophy is once you get the photos to look about 80% good enough, then just export it. And so once again, if I want to export all my photos, I'll press the hop key command plus A, which selects all my photographs. Then I'll click Export, and then I'll choose a folder where I want to export it. So currently I have the Dropbox Pro, and it's totally worth it. And I create different years and folders, so it's 2018. And I currently have Tokyo version 1. This is going to be Tokyo version 2. So I could just either choose this folder here and create a new folder, or I could just click Choose for 2018, click Choose. And then I could create a new subfolder here, click. So I could say Tokyo version two. And for custom text, changes to Eric Kim Street Photography, Tokyo 2018. Uh, I could just say Lumix G9, whatever it may be. And this is actually important for file naming. Just use your first and last name, describe what you're doing, the, the city, the location, and maybe even the camera. For file settings, I usually keep this at JPEG, around, keep this around 80%, which is on Photoshop, imagine 80% on Lightroom is about 10 out of 10 in Photoshop. And if you actually make this 100%, it's totally unnecessary. That's like adding a quality of 12 over 10 in Photoshop. So they've done tests on this, 80% is optimal for the best image quality and size. And I usually just keep this sharpened for screen. A fun little thing I've actually added is under post-processing after export. By default, it's do nothing, but I actually like this show and finder, which means that after you export the photographs, what it'll automatically do is, you know, it's, it's I'm still importing photos to my laptop super slow, but once it's done exporting, then it's going to pop up the dialog, and it's going to show you the photos in the finder, and then you could use that next step to, you know, quickly upload your photos to your blog, your website, Facebook, social media, whatever it may be. So yeah, so this is a basic overview of Lightroom. Yeah, so you can see now that the photos here are exported. And generally what I'll do is I'll open up a new window. And let's say 
I want to create a new post. So I currently have a, a bookmark to my blog under new post. And I would actually highly, highly recommend if you haven't already, start your own blog. Don't use Instagram as much. It's not as awesome. So if I create a new post, uh, I would recommend just using bluehost.com and use wordpress.org. So let's say this is Tokyo Diary 2. And then under Finder, I just press Command A to select all my images, hold left click, drag these into this dialog here for my media library. And it's going to start importing and uploading the photos automatically. And nowadays, one of the things I've been doing is more of this like, diary concept, photo diaries. I don't worry so much about the single image. I just want to kind of share my life experiences. And to me, it's more fun because it allows you to flow more with photography and your ideas. And it's just more interesting. So I could just click insert into post. And all the photos can be here. And usually what I do is click a featured image whatever it may be. So let's say I click this image of Cindy, that featured image. And if I wanted to say uh, new photos with Lumix G9 Pro plus Lumix like a 12 millimeter F1.4 and in Tokyo, colon, enter, enter, and click more. And then I could click publish. So right now I'm obviously not done, so I'm not going to do that. But I'll just kind of see this as a draft. So generally what I'd recommend, once again, keep your workflow simple. If you want to learn more, just Google Air Kim Lightroom. And I have a lot of free new presets. You could also go, oh yeah, here it is. Free Air Kim Lightroom Classic Presets CC. And I've updated my new Lightroom Classic CC presets because the new version has this weird XMP format, which is different from the older Lightroom version. I'll include a link in the description below. And yeah, if you want to see more dopeness, just go to Google Air Kim blog, click the first thing, and yeah, come out, check out the blog, find more inspiration for your photography, your life, entrepreneurship. I'm doing a lot of really cool new articles and images and dope stuff. You could click shop to check out the shop you click amazon forum workshop all this new cool stuff so i'll include links to all of this in the description below and of course i also want to yeah or you can just go to amazon search air Kim products there's a lot of cool stuff here check out some of my upcoming workshops even my new entrepreneurship workshops and photography workshops on udemy or join the forum so, yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys. And remember, with Lightroom, just kind of keep the workflow simple. I'll also try to include some of the hot keys in the description below. But, yeah, always drink coffee, be genki, and live your life to the fullest. Peace out.